Hey, what's up everyone? Juan's here. This update packs uh, some sweet improvement in coming functionality and slicker dashboard experience. But the real star of this new release is design tokens. In this first iteration, you can harness their power to level up your design workflow. And it doesn't stop here. The Pempo team, in collaboration with Token Studio, will keep refining and adding features to make design tokens even more awesome in future releases. So exciting, let's dive right in. Design tokens are the fundamental elements of our design system. Essentially, they store key values such as colors, spacing, typography, border styles, and other properties that define the visual appearance of your product. In other words, they are visual styles that determine the look and feel of our components and elements providing consistency and personality to our design. So, for example, we have the classic button, its text color is black, and the button background color is white. So these two colors serve as example of design tokens that can be used in the button as well as in other elements. We would start with global. At this level, we name the row values, the, the key values. In this case, we have a color that we have called green 300. Then we would move on to a second level, the alias. In this case, the alias refer to the brand, and that is our design system will have you know a specific usage and design decisions regarding visual styles. For example, our green 300 is the primary color we use in our design system, which is why we call it color primary default. We would then move to a third level, the semantic tokens. This is where tokens gain much more potential because given the specific context, we can incorporate into their names. We can be much more precise in their usage. In this case, our primary color is the one we will use as the background for our primary buttons. So we name it button primary background. This makes our intent much more explicit. These tokens can be reused in other parts of the design system, but we will further specify them with additional thematic tokens. In a sense, the light and dark themes of our applications is greatly facilitated by tokens because they allow us to deeply customize and personalize styles throughout our designs and then with a single click change them while designing. And multi branding is a bit more complex uh, where we can use themes to create different brand styles. These themes will have subsets that allow us to configure themes such as light and dark modes, but also, for example, adaptations for the device we are designing for, pixel density, and so on. A new tab has appeared in the left sidebar alongside layers and assets. When you click on it, you can start managing both the themes and the token sets. And within each of them, you have the types of tokens allow you to modify. All right, so as an example, I've brought that could be an excerpt from a design system. I say it's an excerpt because here, as a designer, I have already made several design decisions. Not only on the color palette for the dark and light theme that my buttons will have, but I've also made a decision about the name I've given uh, to the global tokens and how I reference them in terms of the alias that indicates their use in my design system. In this case, mint 100 color will be uh, my primary color in dark mode and the purple 100 color will be my primary color in the light mode. Then the semantic tokens in white indicate the specific usage and provide a lot of context uh, regarding the applicability of these tokens. So since we are working on buttons, the button prefix to work on our primary button, its background and in the default state. All right, so let's start by creating our first set, which we've decided to call it global. We activate it, important, and now we can start creating our first tokens. Call it mint 100, mention alien, and paste the value. I can paste the value or type manually or click on the color to use the color picker. 
Okay, below there is a description field that allows us to add documentation or make references to another token. This is very useful when the tokens are more complex or semantic. Now I have my color created. Uh, if I hover it, I can see that Penpot provides information without having to open the token, such as its name and its values. So next, the following token, which will be our mint. 200 okay i paste the color and save it all right i'm going to continue creating the rest of the tokens and we proceed from here a few tokens later okay now i have already registered the tokens related to colors border radius spacing and some tokens that i've used as reference which i have registered in the dimension category as you can see if i open the token there is uh, one called dimension base with a value of four and scale is a token with the value of 2. The interesting part comes when, for example, if I edit the smallest border radius, xs, we can see that its value is the dimension base minus the scale, in this case, uh, 2. I can perform simple arithmetic operations with the tokens to achieve other values that brings consistency to my design system. As you can see, a small border radius is value of 4, which is my dimension base. The median border radius is the dimension base multiplied by the scale, which equals 8. And the value of the large border radius I've created is the median border radius multiplied by the scale, resulting 16. The interesting thing here is that when I modify the scale or the dimension base, say it changes to 8, my tokens change because they use that reference. So this is super useful and has tremendous potential. Imagine how you could adapt different styles and different systems for various devices or resolutions. It's very interesting. Okay, I'm going to revert it back to four. Okay, all right, let's continue. Now we are going to create the alias for our global tokens. It's interesting to start differentiating between tokens from the dark theme and the light theme. To do this, we are going to create a new set called alias. And by including a slash dark in the naming, a subset is created. For the alias set, I created the dark subset. I'll activate it and will create tokens within. As you can see, I retain my global tokens and within the dark subset, we start creating the ones. I'm going to use, in this case, the primary color and the value of mint 100, primary dark color, another token, I will use the mint 200. And so I will continue creating and referencing the tokens. A few tokens later. Now I have already created my alias, referencing my dark and light tokens, as you can see here from the purples and greens. Now it's time to start creating our semantic tokens for our button. To do this, we create a new set called semantic, and within we are going to create our background color, which will be our primary color. We have here. Next, uh, we create the color for the buttons. Border, which is our primary dark. Great. Finally, we create uh, the token for the text color, which is called text. Okay. Additionally, since I don't have it identified here, but I think we'll need it, we can create another token called, uh, let's say, bottom primary border radius or something like that, for example, and it will have the dimension of border radius median, which I believe it was Eight. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Now I have um, my button primary border radius and the three colors in the semantic set. We activate it and move on to our button, which we have here with barely any styles, but that's going to change quickly. If I select the element and go to the token, I want to apply a right click on the tokens uh, show me the available application options for each token. In this case, the border radius can be applied to all corners or to each one individually. I want to apply it to all. Okay. Let's apply a few more things. 
and the primary background will be applied as a fill to the button the primary border will be applied as stroke and select the text the text token will be applied as color text this way my button already has the primary dark style selected if i were here to activate the light tokens as you can see the light reference would be activated this is very useful and powerful imagine the number of components and elements we can work within our design system but soon i'll show you how Okay, let's take one more step in our learning about tokens in Pempot. For this, we are going to use our beloved Notes application, which we have been working hard on making extensive use of tokens. We can see that now we have two sets, one called Global, which contains a bunch of color tokens. We also have certain dimension tokens, as you can see, with multiplication and scales, as we saw before simple mathematical operation in tokens which are very powerful and other spacing tokens uh, there are new things to explore here what's happening here uh, well the value inside this token has lost its reference so in this case the value it's missing an operator for the mathematical operation in this case uh, a multiplication thing as soon as we fix that it becomes correct the issue is resolved all right I'm going to narrow the sidebar again because here in our uh, light theme, as you can see, I have created another series of conventions to work with all the tokens used in my application, in my design. Down here in tools, we can import and export in JSON format. Let's export the file, download it, and go to our code editor and check out the JSON file. We see that here we have the global set with all the colors and tokens created, and here is the light, which use many fewer tokens, and most of them are references okay you can edit it from here if i need and when to uh, when you import it back into penpot it will be override the current uh, settings for example the light theme let's copy this and if we paste it afterwards and call it dark save the file and now import it and select our token json file that we edited in our code editor and here the dark theme appears don't worry about those missing references it is because the global styles are not selected okay it's worth noting that penpot follows a format currently undergoing instant standardization as uh, you know the design tokens community group is proposed although it still in the standardization process it will likely become a standard zone so okay let's activate the dark theme and as you can see penpot detect the tokens that already exist and overrub them i haven't lost anything at all it has created the new dark set with the tokens i preserve in the json file so now simply if i go and edit the background token changing the reference from the white to black we see that all elements that had the token assigned update accordingly if i change the default foreground from black to white the same happens and finally if i change the default accent which currently use a purple 300 very nice change it to a blue 500 okay in this way super easily and simply in just a few clicks i've managed to create both a light theme and dark theme directly editing a json file What you are looking is an application for which I've created a multi-brand approach. This is, I have different look and feels depending on the various application that the brand of this app will have. Each one has its dark and light modes and different density modes, okay? These are sets and subsets created individually starting from the globals, as you can see here. Each one has its own modifications, okay? But how do I manage all of this to make it easier and more comprehensible? That's where themes come in. As you can see here, I have two active themes. You'll notice that I have a bunch of themes created. Um, I have uh, themes for dark and light. In this case, for the light theme, uh, dark is active. 
and pink is also active you'll see uh, the look and feel change if i activate blue here the look and feel change again and if i activate light each one's interact with uh, its token and variables and alias so how do i create themes themes are a set of sets and subsets that are related to each other and together modify the visual i've created to see this more clearly let's look at the themes list these are the themes i've created dark and light modes different themes uh, for look and feel and density settings if you enter each one uh, you'll see collections of themes and sub themes for example the active loop look and feel theme purple is composed for the global tokens and they are less uh, created for purple that along with everything else i can activate in different themes give me these results for instance so as you can see here in the look and feel section among the the creative colors i have purples but also have pinks blues and one set for greens however i'm not using the greens yet i'm going to create them as a theme within the theme section where i'm creating the different look and feels i call it green and when i create it you can see that there is no active set yet so let's choose them as we mentioned earlier we need to start from the globals which are the base values and then activate the green tokens now it's active so it's been created if i go back to the theme section we see that the green is there too and if i activate it the tokens are overridden and as you can see i can also switch to dark Ta -da. and that's a wrap up on penpot 2.6 people i hope you are as excited as i am about these new design tokens and the fresh improvement we did if you have any thoughts or questions drop any in the comments below uh, we'd love to hear how you plan to use these features in your design workflow so if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future update thank you for watching and take care